Hi, in the previous chapter we talked about mapping GIS data, how we can take a single attribute and display it a number of different ways using natural breaks, breaks or equal intervals or quantiles, and even though the data is the same, the map that we create for it looks differently. Today we're going to talk about how to present GIS data because a map doesn't just include the actual graphic and the counties or states or whatever we're trying to show, it shows a number of different other things. So when we talk about maps, we have a number of different maps. We have a general, what we call a general reference map that shows different features. Um, it's just general reference, meaning that there's no particular purpose for it. On the other side of things, and what we focus on in this class, are what we call thematic maps. Whether it's the distribution of an attribute, or basically a map with a particular goal which we're trying to show. Whether it's, say, our mental maps or perceptions, crime map for Durham, a cancer rate map for the state of North Carolina. We have these maps that, sh that serve as different purposes here. So our, different, our thematic maps, they portray some specific type of information or themes using different types of symbologies. And in the previous lecture, we talked about graduated symbol maps to show points. The bigger the symbol, the more of something. And I think in that case, it was uh, particulate matter. Um, or we color in a county based on an attribute. So you can see here, this is the rate of natural increase. Okay? And you can see here this color scale that we have. This is from yellow all the way up to brown. Brown is going to be the darkest. So if I, brown is the darkest, meaning the highest. Yellow is the lightest, meaning the lowest. So, e, so even if I cover up this area here, cover up this legend here, you can still see what's going on with the map. Here's another one here. This is a graduated symbol map. This is Delta Airlines hubs. The larger the triangle means the more number of cities that are connected by it. So you can see Salt Lake City, Cincinnati, uh, Atlanta, and Dallas are connected by the most. And these smaller subsidiary ones are connected by less. Um, here's a proportional symbol mapping. So these are um, shopping malls. So the larger the dot, the more the shopping mall space. Here's an immigration map from Vietnam. Uh, you can see the thicker the arrow, the more. More people going to Hong Kong versus Thailand and Malaysia versus less to Singapore and uh, Philippines. But typically, it's, it's going to include other things. So when we make a map, you have to think about what is the goal of the map. We want to share, share information. We want to highlight relationships. That's the whole goal of a map. Okay, if I just want to show things in a spreadsheet, I can do that. Okay, a map, we really want to portray that, what we call the regional differentiation. So we can see, oh, the research triangle area, the area between Greens, uh, Greensboro, Charlotte, and Raleigh, that's going to be a lot higher than the other areas. Okay, so we want to highlight those. We want to illustrate our results. And we also want to discern patterns. And typically in our design objectives, we want to put the graphics so it's easy to read. So anyone from a six-year-old can see what's going on to a map all the way up to you know, my grandmother. Okay. So typically when we work with cartographic design, we work with colors, shade patterns, and text. Uh, we have this type of hierarchy. Okay, we have this perception of colors and symbols, illegibility, visual contrast, and hierarchy. Think about it. If we put something in big letters, why do we put it in big letters? Because it's going to be the most important thing. Smaller letters are going to be less important. Okay? We also have this visual balance and hierarchy. So if we put something in the middle up at the top, well, that's going to be more important. How does our re eye read? Our eye reads from the upper left over. So if we put stuff in the upper left corner, that's probably going to be something we want the person to see. Okay, something that's smaller text down in the bottom right, that might be some you know, disclaimer information that we wanted to put on the map. So when we talk about our attribute data, we talked about this before, nominal data. You can see these are in three different colors because we're just showing different states. We have ordinal data, population, and you can see that the color symbols that we have here are more related to each other. You can see this interval. This is the average high, te high low temperature, so you can kind of see they're bringing in these colors, the red to blue dichromatic color systems that we have, which I think are pretty neat to use. You know, I like to work with those, and if you see in 1227, I've got a few of those that go from kind of green to red. We have core plethora maps, 
and those are the ones where we color in states or counties based on a particular value. I showed those previously with population and average family size. So our color schemes do matter. Um, you want to put seven to eight colors at a maximum. Seven to eight colors at a maximum because eventually what's going to happen is you're not going to be able to match up the county with the class that it's supposed to be in because when we make a map, essentially what we're doing is squishing the data. Kind of, We're not giving it a value, but we're giving it a range of values. So if we get too many classes, we won't be able to actually match up that range of values with the color itself because the colors will start to blend into each other. We work with nominal data, desperate color. So we have greens, orange, purples, and we're showing states, something that's not compared. So you can see one here. This is arithmetic population density. Um, this is number of people per square kilometer. So you can see darker, higher, lighter, lower. Okay, and we kind of go from this yellow up to this darker orange. Uh, here we're looking at um, religious denominations or majority religious de denominations by county. So if a county does have a majority, 50% or more of the population belonging to a certain religion, it's highlighted here. Okay, and you can notice here I've got yellow, green, purple, orange, blue, uh, dark green, and then no majority. Why do you why do you think these are in different colors? Why did I name this yellow, lighter yellow, brown, dark brown? Why? Because th these are nominal classifications. I can't say, oh, Episcopal is better than Lutheran, is better than Methodist, is better than Mormon, is better than Roman Catholic, is better than I can't say that. I can't say that. Okay, these are nominal classifications with basically hard to compare okay, or hard to quantify. When we work with our color schemes, we have what we would call a single hue or monochromatic. We have a double-ended or dichromatic. I like working with these, especially if the middle value is going to be our mean. So we work above our mean, below our mean. If we work with temperatures. This might be a good one to work with. I work from reds to greens. I also like, I worked for the military, so green good, red bad. And then you can see what we call it here is part spectral. So we might go from a yellow to a brown. So not only do we take advantage of the brown here, or the yellow here, we also take advantage of the yellow so we can kind of get a few more classes. And then here we've got our full spectral. So we've got a lot of different things that we can work with. There's been some studies in the types of colors and t that have internal contrast. So things like greens and purples have a little bit more internal contrast than other colors. So you might be able to you know, squeeze out another class in those. Typically, black, uh, white to black doesn't have a lot of, a lot of internal contrast, but we use those, use those for people that are colorblind. And also, when we print out our st uh, print out our work, a lot of times it'll be converted to black and white, and you want that to show up well. If we put it in kind of single hue and it's converted to black and white, it's going to look a little bit different. Uh, we have a legend. Basically, it tells us what the le what the symbols stand for. You can see some of these standard symbols here for highways, uh, interstate highways, and U.S. highways. Um, you can see lakes rivers are blue because, well, that's what everyone else uses. Okay, so some of these are going to be things that are generally accepted. Now, these are things that I work with in the military. Red, off limits. Why do you think this is in red? We don't want people going there. We want that to be highlighted. So when we're making a training map, you better avoid this red cross hatch. In arc map, we have what we call data view, and then we ha all also have layout view. And when I go to layout view, you can see up at the top there, not in this particular picture here, uh, you can see uh, our rulers for the size of the paper that we're printing it out at. And then when we go to insert, we can insert our data, uh, we can insert titles, neat lines, um, scale bars, north arrows, a lot of different things. And all these maps are stored as what we call MXD files. So the data is stored separately. So we've got to make sure our MXD file is stored in the same place as our data, or at least we have a link to it. So these MXD files store the data location. So oh, this states layer, this is sitting on your C GIS class drive. And then the properties, what did we color it in at? All this stuff that goes around the side here. So when you look at the MXD files, they aren't very big in size. The actual data files may be in for the reasons that we talked about before. Uh, when we set up the page, um, are we going to set up it as landscape or portrait? That's a great question. For North Carolina, what do you think? Portrait or landscape? 
I'm probably going to say landscape because North Carolina is a lot longer east to west as opposed to north to south. Where I grew up in New Jersey, it was a longer north to south distance as opposed to uh, east west. So we'd set it up as a portrait. And then these are the different al elements here. We've got a, a title, a map body, a legend, scale bar, a north arrow to tell us what's north, maybe some other text here. Some, sometimes I put things like disclaimers. Uh, data sources, where did I get the data from? This is from population of 1990. Okay, uh, maybe some disclaimers that I put in there. Another thing that I might want to do is maybe put this all the way up at the top across in bigger letters. So you can see something in the top that's bigger letters than the other things. That's probably going to be the most important thing that you want people to focus on. Okay, and like I was saying before, in our ArcGIS, we can go to insert. We can insert our lean line, our legend, our north arrow. You notice here, we can play with the properties in our legends. You notice here, do we need six or seven decimal points after the six or seven uh, places after the decimal point? Probably not. So we can limit that to two. So we can make things look a little bit nicer and neater. Okay, and this is an example that we have here. There's lots of different styles and backgrounds that we can put them in. We can add a north arrow. There's, I think, 98 different north arrows that we can put on. And then we can also put scale bars. A lot of times, if we're working with latitude and longitude and you insert a scale bar, it's going to give it to us in degrees. How far is a degree? I don't know either. <laughs> okay, so you can click on the properties and change those to miles. Okay, we can also add textual information. Okay, so we can make that big title in font 32, I can make my disclaimer that says, hey, you, here's a map here, but I wouldn't use this for a road map. This map's supposed to show this type of information. I wouldn't use this for any other purposes than what we're showing it for. Yeah, that might be something small I stick down in the bottom right. And these are our layout tools, because I can zoom into data. I can also zoom into the map, too. Okay, that's called layout view. And then we also have projection information. That shows how our distortion we have here. When we have basically our projection, the problem, the reason why we have uh, projections is because the Earth is 3D, our maps are 2D. Okay, so when we stick that 3D surface onto a 2D surface, we run into some issues. We have something called the geographic projection system, which is angular distances from the center of the Earth. So we measure 90 degrees up to North Pole, North or South South Pole. Now. In a GIS, we don't have north and south or east and west. We have positive and negative. So in the United States here, we're west of the prime meridian, so we're going to have a negative longitude. And when you think about it, longitude measures distance east and you know to the left and right of the prime meridian. That kind of stands for our x as our longitude, and our latitude is north and south, which is y. So it's been kind of a little bit confusing to be honest with you. So our x is our longitude and our y is our latitude, even though we say latitude, longitude. So that's something to be mindful of. We have pro different projections. And a thing about the Earth is that because of the rotation of the Earth, it's going to be slightly fatter. We, 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 what we have is a geo geodal bulge. It's slightly fatter at the equator than the poles. Um, we have different projections that we have here. Okay, you can see this area here is called Greenland. It looks to be about the same size as South America or Africa, but in reality, they're not. And you notice, as we move further and further north, these lines of latitude are supposed to converge to the North Pole, but they don't. So there's advantages and disadvantages of using different types of projections. Um, so when we make a map, there's always going to be some sort of distortion. You notice our lines of latitude and longitude are now curved. They weren't in that previous one, but now we, the sizes are going to be somewhat the same. And we can view this projection information in our metadata or our layer properties. Okay. So this is for a geographic projection. You can see if you were to show a map of the US that looks like this, it would look really ugly. People might laugh, even though we're working with latitude and longitude. So we want to show it in something that looks nice and neat here. Okay, you notice how kind of long this looks? This would look a little bit better. And then we have North Carolina State Plane Projection, in which we minimize the distortion for particular states.